Welcome back. It's World Antibiotic Awareness Week, and it is so fitting that after the video we just saw before the break, now in 10 minutes to your health, we're going to discuss antibiotic resistance. Joining us is Dr. Michael Abrahams. Morning, Michael. Tell Morning, Delia. In a, in a nutshell, what is the problem? We use, it up, we use up antibiotics so much that it just not have no more use? Yes, kind of. it's kind of like that. We use antibiotics a whole lot, and antibiotics are very, very, very useful. Yeah. Antibiotics have saved millions, probably billions of lives. But as my grandmother used to say, too much of one thing, good for nothing. Mm -hmm. And the problem is that it's, it's antibiotics are being overused. And when they're being overused, the germs that we want to get rid of, which are the bad bacteria, sometimes develop resistance, which means that the drugs just don't work anymore. Right. So, um... For example, but, Mr. Le but define overuse for me, like like some things that we don't need to take antibiotics for. We're taking it definitely. All right. For, first of all, antibiotics kill bacteria. We get infec infections from different types of germs, right? Or what we call microorganisms, small organisms. So, for example, we can get infections from bacteria, from viruses like the common cold, mm -hmm. from fungi. For example, yeast infection is a common example. Yeast infection is not caused by bacteria, it's mm -hmm. a fungus, mm -hmm. fungal infection. And the thing is bacteria will respond to antibiotics, appropriate antibiotics. But what has been happening is that antibiotics are being used where they have no use. So mm -hmm. for example, if you, have a, if you have a viral infection like the common cold or the flu or herpes, which are all caused by viruses and if those infections are uncomplicated, and you take antibiotics, not only will the antibiotics not alleviate the symptoms or kill the germs, but the overuse encourages resistance. When you say, and you take them, where we get them from? Is the problem, because I saw one of the things that says don't share antibiotics. Yes. Are they being overprescribed, or are people just going and buying over the counter and sharing? The problem is both sides really, you know, because as doctors, sometimes we overprescribe them, and then the public will source them from places they ought not to source them mm. from. Marvin. Because, excuse me? From Marvin. Marvin. Oh, Mar where's, where's Marvin? Him. So I can't get my stuff from, okay, Marvin, mm -hmm. I didn't know that. Mm -hmm. It's cheap with him, cheap. I don't know if it's cheap, but it's not healthy. Got the brand name thing off of my health card expire. Mm -hmm. Anyway, uh -huh. so what happened is that you have these antibiotics, right? And they're only supposed to be prescribed by medical professionals. So, for example, by a medical doctor or a vet mm -hmm. for animal stuff. But people are getting antibiotics, like from them friend who is a pharmacist, oh. or from them friend who is not even a pharmacist. Mm. Because you have people like Marvin. Yeah. You have people selling antibiotics on the street. Mm -hmm. I mean, literally, like on the sidewalk. Mm. You can't go some places downtown and have really? them laid out, and you buy them like you buy in Guinea. Antibiotics? Yes. And, and what people don't understand is that different antibiotics, yeah, the antibiotics are for different kill things. different germs. Yeah. So, for example, I'll give you an example. The kind of germs that cause a bladder infection mm -hmm. are often different from the ones that will cause a sinus infection. So, the antibiotics you get to treat that are different from ones so for the sinus. But people antibiotic think antibiotics are just antibiotics, oh. and I have some things so I won't take antibiotic. Mm -hmm. Another problem people will get a course of antibiotics to take, and they don't take the full course. And that's a, that's a problem. What's and I'll tell you why. I'll tell you why. Mm. When these courses are prescribed, the way we come up with antibiotics and, 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 and the courses is from research. So they'll, re they'll do research looking at patients with a certain type of infection. They determine which antibiotics work best, what dose I should give, by what route, whether oral, intravenous, or in a, as an injection in your muscle, and for how long. So when these courses are agreed upon, they have a consensus and say, okay, you treat this with this course for like, one week. You start to take it for like two, three days. Feel you feel better. better. I said, can't bother me. If you good already, I'm going to stop. Mm -hmm. What happens is that the, the, the infection is partially treated. And when it's partially treated, not all the bacteria that it's supposed to kill die. Love and the ones that love. don't die, the ones that, the ones that get away now say, man, we get away now. So I guess mm -hmm. so I'm going to tell my friend them about this antibiotic and them share the information with them friend them Here and their friend them get resistance. Aubrey, you do it all the time, don't it? Here I'm you do it all I the time. Stop taking it out. Yes, stop taking it. And then two or three months later, when the cough come back, he said, 
What did you do the antibiotic then? What did that All right, so that's a glad you brought that up. And then, yes, and then you go back. Yes, let me finish. Let me finish. Take them. I'm glad you brought that up. Yes. Because a common thing. So, for example, you start taking a course and you stop. Yes. So it's partially treated. Yes. Some of them get away and spread information to, to, to them brethren them mm -hmm. and they develop resistance. So when you get sick again, you say, oh yeah, let me draw for the antibiotics. But what you also have is another partial course. Mm -hmm. So again, you have treating it, number one. Number two, maybe taking the wrong antibiotics too. I'll give you an example. You may have a bladder infection and you may know the symptoms. You may start passing urine off, have burning when you pass urine, etc. The urine may look cloudy, may smell a bit weird. And you get a course of antibiotics and that may work you may get another bladder infection caused by a bacteria but a different bacteria that does not respond to that antibiotic yeah because ideally ideally if you have a bladder infection the urine should be sent to a lab for a culture mm -hmm. culture means That's the so test in the lab the they look for the bacteria that small bottle that small bottle after mm. gymnastics and pass mm -hmm. stuff into so when it goes to the lab what happens is that they test it to see number one is it an infection and if it is they have to identify the bacteria and then identify which antibiotics kill that particular bacteria mm. so you may have gotten for example a drug called nor norfloxacin for a blood infection two months ago and it worked you get another blood infection you can't bother go doctor tell your pharmacist friend boy give me some of that renew this, it work. Renew this. but the bacteria you have this time is a different bacteria that does not respond to that mm -hmm. And the risk is you're going to use it. It's not going to work. And in those days you are using it, infection gets worse. Uh. And it can get severe. It can even spread to your kidney. So it's important not to self-diagnose and to self-treat. Mm -hmm. And there, as I said, there are other infections now that not only will antibiotics not cure, they can make them worse. A common example is yeast infections. W women, some women have yeast infections. And the characteristic... Some. <laughs> Well, I th some most? say they've never had it, but okay. most probably, yes, okay. have, had this, have had it at least once. And, and the symptoms, for those of you who don't know, like Marvin, is... Marvin is a man, right? Yes. Okay, I don't know what he identifies as, we look like a man. Yes, a man. yes. All right, Marvin. So, you may have a discharge. Though, but you may have a discharge. Yes. You can have itching, and it's usually a thick discharge, a mm. clumpy thing, and it, it irritates a lot. That's caused by a fungus. Fungi do not respond to antibiotics. And what happens is that antibiotics can actually precipitate a yeast infection because the vagina, the vagina normally has bacteria, which are good bacteria. And sometimes you have yeast in there as well and they're balanced out. Mm -hmm. When you take antibiotic, it wipes out the bacteria mm -hmm. and then yeast have more room to spread. Yeah. So if you and have some doctors do tell you when they give you antibiotics that this may yes. trigger a yeast infection. So if you infection. have a yeast infection, now you diagnose yourself and think it's another kind of infection, mm. like a common one that women have called bacterial vaginosis, which is caused by a bacteria. And, and you, you want to take, take antibiotics. this, man is going to make it worse. Mm -hmm. You hear Marvin? Okay. You hear? So Don't wanna, stop selling the plastic, see through plastic bag. And one of the major problems now is that Gonorrhea, which some people thought was not really around so much, mm. is very much around and is different. Why looks afraid? It no, like, Marvin, me look at me. Why would I mention gonorrhea? You look like your size. Just just, him here. Is up. So oh, you're saying gonorrhea that people thought was. Don't worry. Don't worry. Yeah. So, <laughs> I'm not worried. Okay, I'm just wondering. You know, you know, speak Marvin, 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 I, I just, Marvin, my word, about. I just but said it to you. Marvin, me seeing get. Okay. Oh, gosh. <laughs> I hope you feel bad, Marvin. Stop so, selling in so the secret gonorrhea, plastic. Gonorrhea yeah. is one of the most common sexually transmitted infections. Mm -hmm. Millions of people are infected every year. And don't know. Still, over 70 million is estimated. And the thing is that gonorrhea, that, that bacteria is a very smart bacteria. It develops resistance easily. So when I was in med school, long time ago, you have gonorrhea, you get an injection of penicillin in your bottom, and you're good to go, you're gone. Mm -hmm. After a while... Gonorrhea became resistant to penicillin. Mm. So not only did we have to use a different drug for gonorrhea, gonorrhea is now treated with two different antibiotics. One is given orally and one is given as an injection. So that was going along and then we realized that some people start, some bacteria start to develop serious resistance to the antibiotics. So for example, in Japan and Spain and France, mm -hmm. they have reported cases of gonorrhea where nothing works. Wow. Penicillin doesn't work. 
The newer drugs don't work. I'd read in the to paper. To be honest, that I don't know what happened to these people now because they're walking with gonorrhea still, and gonorrhea can be a, a debilitating disease because it affects the genitalia and it can lead to fertility issues. With women, oh. it can lead to infection in the tubes, mm. can cause severe pain, can cause infertility. With men, they can have infections affecting not just the penis alone, but the prostate, and that can be a mess down there. And depending on the type of sex you have, gonorrhea can cause. It can get infection in your throat. Mm. It can get infection in your rectum. It's not. It's not a. It's not a fun it's thing not at all. It's not something to joke no, around. No, no, it's with. not. Right. Um, so we had to go, but I know the there was a conference or something at UE. There's a symposium at university tomorrow. Mm -hmm. It starts, I think, at six o'clock. Uh, it's at the Sir Kenneth Standard Lecture Theatre, mm -hmm. and it's going to be about antibiotic resistance. We have a speaker who is very experienced has done a lot of research, and it would be, it's, it's open to the public, but the information that I receive is that it's going to be more of a clinical presentation, presentation. but the public mm -hmm. is, is invited. Mm -hmm. But in the meantime, what you all can do, there's, there's a jingle that is out that they actually asked me to write, and I, I, I did the, the jingle with Wayne Armand, mm -hmm. and it's really telling you some basic things about antibiotics, that you need to, to follow the course of instructions, mm -hmm. to not share them. Mm -hmm. Do not interrupt them. Do not stop the courses prematurely. Mm -hmm. It's very important to do what you are told. And when you go to the doctor, if they are prescribed, it's a good idea also to ask your doctor if they are totally necessary because sometimes we allow patients to manipulate us into giving them antibiotics. antibiotics. Mm -hmm. You may have a call and somebody say, hey, man, let's give me that. need to deal with it, man. Come here. Yes. Yeah. It's important. Um, and I'm glad, Michael, that we had... Um, a frank discussion about it and about STIs and so on. I think we're never going to get a hand on it unless people are comfortable talking about it. We have and, to talk and about appreciating that it's a natural part of human life and you have to face it, to, to treat it and get rid of it. And to protect ourselves. Quite so. Yeah. Thank you very much. Okay. Well, Marvin, that was Dr. Michael <laughs> Abrams, right? Yeah. So we're going to be right back. <laughs> After this break, all them plastic things you're walking with, you're selling these men at TVJ. It's not right. I'm telling you, it's not right. Them see through so small plastic. Harold, don't buy no more from him. Right. You take credit cards? Aubrey, don't.